What's up YouTube and welcome to a new video. Now the Porsche 911 9S7 is often quoted as the last mechanical Porsche. They of course come with plenty of driver aid, but the steering is still hydraulic instead of electrically assisted. Now out of the non-GT models, it is especially the 9S7.2 which receives a lot of praise. The engine was heavily revised and didn't suffer from the problems which haunted the 9S7.1. Moreover, the PDK box was introduced and also this was a major improvement over the Tiptronic in the 9S7.1. Now if you watched already some of the other videos on my channel or are following the news about used car prices, then you know that prices surged during the last year. A combination of COVID-19 and a shortage in the chip sector is keeping supply of new cars low, while demand is relatively high. So I don't need to tell you that 997 values followed that trend and increased. The interesting thing over here is then also if the value development is different for the 997.1 and 997.2, or perhaps even among the different models, such as the base version, the S and the GTS. Moreover, it could be even so that there's a difference between the high and low mileage cars. That and more is what you will find out in this video. And as always, I will first present to you the market as it is today, before we have a look at the price development. The following graph shows a high level overview of today's market. We have the model year on the horizontal axis, the price in US dollars on the vertical axis, because we are looking at the US market. And you can also see that the market is split by model type and that the black axis show the median price points. Now then, let me point out some noteworthy things. In today's market, there are 208 cars for sale and the median price for a 911 997 is $53,700. And for this price, you typically get a car with around 44,000 miles. Yet, there are some big differences between the generations and between the model types. The base model is of course the cheapest and tends to cost $11,000 less than the S model. And as you can see from the black axis, this gap is more or less the same for each model year. At the same time, you can also see that the S is a lot more popular than the base model. There are 130 S models for sale and only 75 base ones. The GTS, however, is extremely rare. There are only three cars for sale and they are of course priced at the top end of the market, but not as high as I initially expected. But speaking about the price range, look at the price variation in this market. Some low mileage cars are priced between 90 and $100,000, while high mileage cars sit between 30 and $40,000. Yet, as you would expect, a lot of this price depends on the generation you are looking at. 997.1s tend to go for $50,000, while this is $68,000 for the 997.2. The latter is also a lot more rare. There are only 52 cars for sale. Now finally then, you can also see that within the 997.1 and 997.2 market, model year is not really important anymore for the price. The median price is more or less the same for each model year, within each market segment. Now you can of course look at this market from different angles. We could for example have a look at the split between transmission type, between roof type, and also at the difference between the two wheel driven and four wheel driven cars. However, I think what you really want to know is how much values went up. So let's have a look. This graph shows the median price development over time. We have the time on the horizontal axis and the price on the vertical axis. And look at that, prices surged for all models. For the base model prices increased with $11.5,000 from $35.5 to $47,000. And this equals an increase of 32%. And if you watch some of my other videos recently, then you know that this increase is very large. But more about that later. We will continue now with the S model. We can namely see that the price increase is almost the same as in the base market. Prices increased with $13,000 from $45,000 to $58,000. And this equals an increase of 29%. And both the increases in the S and the base market are statistically confirmed. And this means that it is unlikely that they are the result of chance. Yet, the price increase in the GTS market is not fully statistically confirmed. Also here, prices increased, but the magnitude of the increase is much smaller with $8,500 or 12%. So from a high level, it is clear that prices went up. But the interesting part here is of course to find out if there are certain market segments which are driving this price increase. Is it for example the 907.2 which is driving it, the manuals or the low mileage cars? Now it would take a lot of time to show you all of these splits and not all of them are relevant. I will therefore show you for each model only the relevant splits. But before I do that, if you like this data-driven way of analyzing car market, 
please support the channel by smashing that like button. Thank you. We start with the base model, but there were no obvious segments driving the price increase. Yet, that doesn't mean that there's nothing interesting happening in this market. Let me show you the following. Over here we have the mileage to price relationship for the 97.1 and the 97.2. In blue we have the market one year ago, and in orange we have today's market. Now before we look at any of the numbers, you need to know that supply decreased a lot. Last year there were 152 cars for sale, and now only 75. And that is of course reflected in the prices. Yet, it didn't affect the depreciation per thousand miles so much. Currently this sits at $221 per thousand miles driven, or 0.4%, and this is an excellent score. But now then, let's have a look at the price development. As you can see, the orange line lives above the blue line, so prices went up. Yet, for the 97.1, this increase was $13,000, or almost 40%, well, this was only eight and a half thousand dollars or 17 percent for the 97.2 however as you can see we only have a few data points for the 97.2 market it is therefore a bit difficult to draw any hard conclusions based on those numbers thankfully though this is not the thing which is really interesting over here if we namely look at the mileages then we can see that the gap between the two curves is larger for the higher mileage cars than for the low mileage cars. And this means that the price increase is higher for the higher mileage cars. And this effect can be perfectly illustrated with the following graph. Here we have again the date on the horizontal axis and the price on the vertical axis. Yet, the lines represent now the price increase for the different mileages. For example, the blue line shows the value development for the cars which have a mileage between zero and 27,821 miles. For these cars, prices increased with $4,000 or 8.1%. Now, the interesting thing over here is that the higher the mileage, the larger the price increase. The orange line shows an increase of 17%, the green one of 26%, the red one of 36% and the purple one of 43%. And for the last two, this means an increase of roughly $12,000. Hence, we can conclude that prices indeed went up, but that most of the increase is coming from the mid to high mileage cars. Hmm, okay. But does that make any sense? Why would high mileage cars increase so much more than low mileage cars? We need to dig a bit deeper in the data to find out what's going on here. And please stay with me. We need to find out if there's a certain segment within the mid to high mileage cars which is increasing the prices. And as you probably guessed, there is. The following graph shows the base market split by transmission type. And this is a key graph to understand the market. For both the manuals and the automatics prices went up. For the automatics this is $10,500 or 29% and for the manuals this is $12,000 or 34%. Now as you can see from the numbers, there is of course some difference between the two increases, but nothing out of the ordinary. Yet, the way in which the market changed during the last year is vastly different. Like one could expect, the median mileage increased in the manual market. In the automatic market, however, the median mileage decreased. And this means that even if prices didn't change over time, prices would still go up. After all, low mileage cars are more expensive than high mileage cars. It is then also so that when we look at the mid to high mileage cars, the increase is clearly coming from the manual market. Moreover, when we look at the automatics under $40,000, then we can see that the price increase over there is quite small. In fact, prices over there only went up with 4 to 5%. Now also for the manuals, the price increase is smaller for low mileage cars, but the differences are much smaller. In that market, the increase is roughly 23%. Now I think that it would be still really interesting to see over here if the price increase for each transmission type differs between the 97.1 and 97.2. But unfortunately, we have too few observations for that. So let's do a short summary because we went through a lot of numbers. It's clear that value surged and that this price increase is carried across the market. Yet, when we drill down in the data, then we can see that it are especially the mid to high mileage manuals which increase. Now one can think of arguments as to why it are the manuals which show the largest increase. But what about the mileages? Why is it so that the mid to high mileage cars increase the most? Is that a coincidence? Let me know in the comment section what you think. Is there a good reason as to why the mid to high mileage cars increased more than the low mileage cars? Now what is also interesting to find out if this is something which happens only in the base market. 
or does it also happen in the S market? We already saw that on a high level, the increase was more or less the same in the S and the base market. And generally speaking, these markets do then also behave in the same way. Let's see what the data reveals. Over here we have again the market split by transmission type with the manuals at the top and the automatic at the bottom. And just as in the base market, supply decreased a lot. One year ago there were 309 cars for sale and now only 130. Another thing which is similar to the base market is the value increase for the manuals. They increased more than the automatics and the relative increase is exactly the same. Values went up with $14,500 or 34%. And most likely it's not a coincidence that the increase over here is the same as in the base market. So we're looking at a real price increase. For the automatics the increase is a bit less with $10,000 or 21%. Now a question which we can ask ourselves here and also answer is whether or not the price increase differs between the generations. After all, the 97.2 was upgraded with the PDK box. Hence, it could be so that the market prefers that box to a manual one. Let's have a look what the data says. The graphs over here are now split by two dimensions. On the left hand side we have the 97.1 market and on the right hand side the 97.2 market. At the top we have the manuals and at the bottom we have the automatic ones. Now I'm not going to cover each graph individually, so I will just insert the relative price increases in them. We can see now that both in the 97.2 and 97.1 market, the manuals increase the most. Yet, we can also see that the increase is slightly higher in the 97.2 market than in the 97.1 market. Unfortunately though, the 97.2 market is extremely small these days and that makes it difficult to draw any firm conclusions. Nevertheless, if we go with what we have, then the increase would indeed be smaller in the 97.1 market. And this would confirm our hypothesis. But again, the data is limited, so keep that in mind. Now before we move on, there is still one thing we need to talk about in the S market. There's namely a certain niche market inside this market, which can show very different value developments. The 4S market. If you purchase the 4S you get the best of both worlds. You get those nice white hips which in my opinion look the part and you also get a more powerful engine. I therefore had a special look at the manual 4S market. After all, if the 996 market has any predictive power as to what will happen in the 997 market, that's the market to look at. At the left hand side we have now the 997.1 and at the right hand side we have the 997.2 market. And this graph only includes the manuals. But by now I think you know the drill. Prices increased. But look at that 97.2 market. We only have a few data points, but the points which we have lay miles above the ones one year ago. So the price increase of 28% over here looks to be a solid one. And that of course only leaves us with one market left to analyze. The GTS market. Unfortunately though, that market is too small to break down into any market segments. So we just need to do it with the high level price development which I showed you in the beginning of the video. Yet, before we summarize and conclude, I still want to show you one more thing. And that is how the price increase relates to other markets. It's namely really special what we are seeing over here. And again, this is best illustrated with a graph. Over here we have the relative price increase over the last period for a bunch of cars which I analyzed on the channel. The price increase is not based on exactly the same period for all cars, but it works to get a rough estimate. And look at that. Which car saw the largest price increase? Exactly, the 911 907 Carrera. The increase is a multiple of what we have seen in other markets. And this really underpins the popularity of the 911 and the 997 generation. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this might be the ultimate 911 for many. And with that, let's summarize and conclude. It's clear that prices increased. They increased a lot and they increased across the market. That's the key takeaway. All models increased with approximately the same percentage. Moreover, within each market, so the one for the base, the S and the GTS, there is not one market segment in particular which is driving the price increase. There are some nuances, but the differences are not night and day. For example, we saw that both in the S and the base market, the manuals increased more than the automatics. And that this goes for both the 997.1 and 997.2 in the S market. And that surprised me. Furthermore, in the base market, 
we saw that it were the mid to high mileage manuals which saw the largest increase. Finally then, we also saw that on a general level, the 9.7.2 market increased a bit more than the 9.7.1 market, but the differences over there are negligible. And all of these price increases in the 9.7 market are really severe. We namely compared these increases to some of the increases for the other cars which I've analyzed and we saw that the increase in the 9.7 market was the most severe. Now I don't have any data to back this up but for my feeling this increase is more demand than supply driven. We all know that there is an issue with the production of new cars such as the shortages in the chip sector. But are those people who are planning to order a brand new car really buying a 10 to 15 year old 911? Rather, I think that there is an increase in demand from people who are not affected by the pandemic, could save up a bit because of the lockdown, and decided that it was time to treat themselves. But this is just a thought. Let me know down in the comment section what you think caused this large value increase in the 9 7 market. And with that we arrive at the end of this video. Now if you like this data driven way of analyzing cars, but would have liked to see it for a different car, you can comment the name of that car also down below in the comment section. Once there are enough requests for a certain car, I will make a video about it. Also don't forget then to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll get actually notified when your requested analysis goes live. As always, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next week for a new video.